Hi everyone, Mike Haas along with Deuce McAllister following day eight of practice, technically the fourth in pads. They had the day off yesterday and hard not to begin with the wide receiver room. Uh, Jermaine Jackson left late in practice today, the wide receiver, Cedric Wilson, uh, Bub Means, Equinemius St. Brown. So Jermaine would be the fourth wide receiver that's, you know, soft tissue. We'll talk about calves and hamstrings. They signed Samson Bakua, uh, the wide receiver from the USL, uh, Puka Nakua's older brother, and they also signed Mark West Calloway. This, uh, the wide receiver room is not supposed to take this long of this wrap up, but it does. And so, uh, you know, it's a very deep room, but that's, 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 that's a lot. Two new receivers, and you got four guys basically kind of. Uh, hamstrings and, and, and to calves. Yeah, hamstrings, calves, and shins. That's yeah. what you're looking with. And, uh, you know, that's really with all your soft tissue injuries. You talk about some other guys, you know, some other positions, wide receivers have been hit the hardest with those injuries. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I can't say it's lack of conditioning. I think it's, you know, uh, the elements will get you a little bit. You know, you talk about cool weather, not as warm. Uh, maybe I'm not hydrating as much. Maybe I'm not stretching as much. And, you know, some, some of those guys are probably getting a little bit more running than they've normally done in uh, a short amount of time but uh, you know hopefully it's not long term you've had a couple of guys out I know uh, you know Kendra Miller was one he's at least outside he's doing some work with the trainers at times uh, you know Marshawn Lattimore he's back outside I know he was dealing with the hip flexor you know we haven't seen Demario outside yet uh, he's dealing with a slight hamstring so you know um, dog days of camp I mean that, that's just really where you are maybe uh you know, you don't see as many to a certain position like the receivers, but it happens. Yeah, I think Demario was out. I think Jalen Ford was out from a linebacker standpoint. Yeah. And you're kind of at the point now when they get into team, you don't have to watch as much. You can just listen. And I heard, way to go, orgy, 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 and Foskey, 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 58 and 55, uh, you know, trying to make that impression, and both have certainly done so. Well, I think when you look at Anthony Orgy, one of the things that you catch, you know, I had a couple of his games back at uh, Vanderbilt. He was all over the field, and that's really what you get now. You know, he may not have get the normal reps uh, if Demario is healthy, and maybe some of the other guys are healthy. But now, with him, the, some of those guys down, he's able to play the Sam, he's able to play the Mike, he can play the Will, so he can move all over the field. You know, and not as lost in a sense, uh, from a football standpoint, and he can make plays. And so, I know he had two where he was point of attack and he was able to beat the block and be able to make the play for a tackle for, t a tackle for loss uh, in the backfield, on the backs. And Foskey, he's had a really, really good camp. Uh, probably could do a little bit more. I mean, but in the run game, pass rushing, he's been able to, you know, just make his number flash where you look back and you look, Oh, that's Foskey, you know, because almost a couple times, even though he lines up a defensive end, you know, he may drop a little bit or he chases it down from the backside and you have to look and say, oh, yeah, that's that's Foskey. So he's been he's been flashing a little bit for him. So we had officials today for the first time play clock. They get a little red zone. I mean, each each day, but having the officials here actually throwing flags, actually, and as Dennis said, I want to see you. if you're going to call it in a game, call it out here because you don't do me any good if you don't. Yeah, and I think for the players, it's letting them know what they can and can't get away with. You know, you always can have the conversation with the official after the play and, hey, look, you know, I, I wouldn't call that in the game or, you know, was that legal? Yeah, if you do it this way, I'm not going to call it. So just getting that rapport with the officials and understanding. I mean, each crew is going to be a little bit different. You know, and guys, when they go out and warm up, if I can talk to the official then, you know, and you, you get a scouting report on the officials, how, how they call games, you know, uh, what they're looking for, different things of that nature. And so I can adjust before the play happens and if you don't adjust then you're kind of cheating yourself because you know what they're looking for yes a foul is a foul but at the same time if there are certain things they're looking for don't go and do it and finally and it's you know we talk a lot about the starters in the back and these guys making trying to make an impression and i'm just it just happened to happen in front of me and it's lawrence johnson the safety number 37 and jacob cabote the running back and cabote slams into johnson helmet flies mouthpiece flies and it's just an indication to me is that man, these guys we, we don't they don't necessarily talk about it, but they're fighting for their professional it's livelihood. A job. Yeah. It's, a, it's a job, it's work. And so um, we've seen a couple helmets come off, and that tells you that they don't strap them up as tight. And then even with the mouthpiece, you always think about thud. Well, I'm gonna lower my shoulder if you guys have been taking me down to the ground, and that's exactly what happened. And so uh, you know, good good on good, and that's what that's what happens. It's a physical game, and so um, when you see it live up close, it's like ooh. You know, that, that, that kind of hurt. And so uh, you'll, you'll know to strap it up a little bit tight, tighter and uh, to be able to bite down on that mouthpiece because you never know when a guy is going to say, I'm not expecting uh, 
you to tackle me completely, but I'm going to protect myself. And so as a tackler as well as a runner, that's how you have to have to kind of prepare for it. The Saints first of four days of practices, three of which will be in pads before their next day off on Tuesday. So as you can see, the weekends mean nothing here. It's just a Saturday and Sunday. Groundhog That's Groundhog Day. Day, take 11. So produce McAllister, Mike Hoss, Jeff Nowak as well. All of your coverage right here on WWL AMF. Always free on the Odyssey app.